Hello my fellow cigar smokers and welcome to Smokers Bud. The night owl again. Tonight we're smoking the old Davidoff uh, Royal Robusto. It's the last one I have. Actually it was a present uh, I think last year. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the cigar, what is it about, and and so on and so on. Um, but as always, let's get it started first. Well, cut was nice. very good to draw something fresh refreshing like green tea like this together with hay or grass very interesting and the smell gives me some some coffee actually So the Davidov Royal Robusto or Royal Robusto. Actually I just made two sizes, the Robusto and the Salomonas. And why I'm saying the old one? Because they first released that uh, Royal series in 2008 <coughs> with the cigar and the Salomonas. Then I think in, I'm not quite sure now, but I think 2014 or 2016, they brought out the new series and then they called it the Royal Release Robusto and Royal Release Salomonas. And they made a new banding that here's the traditional white and gold banding and the new ones were in blue, white and gold. They were looking top notch and they're great cigars. But guys, I have to tell you, even this ones, they were like, the Robusto was like, I think between 30 and 40 euros. And remember back then it was 2008. And the Royal release Robusto is around, I think, 90 euros, and the Salomon is like 110 euros per stick. Well, wow, well, that's a good cigar, really. I thought that's the right occasion today to smoke a very good uh, cigar. because I have something to celebrate. <laughs> uh, and it was a good week. It was a good week, plus I have something to celebrate. Uh, <coughs> Crap, you guys are doing good wherever you are. You had a good week and you were able to smoke a few good cigars and um, had some fun and not so much hassle throughout the uh, everyday things. Uh, this week was kind of, in a moment I will come to and tell you about why I'm in the mood to celebrate something and why it was a good week. And although I have something to celebrate and it was a good week, it was it was one of these weeks where and I always I always like recognize that when I'm doing the um, funnily enough the, the the stuff for smokers but you know because this week it was like I was just finishing my videos like 
even on the same day I have to, I had to release it or like a day before and usually I'm, I'm a little bit more easy going on that I will like two or three days in advance I'm doing that taking some time you know but this time it was like uh, the rhythm was like uh, was getting close you know rich and heavy smoke that freshness is there that's lovely and uh, not sure if it's coffee actually it, it just tastes like there's something roasted but mm, not quite sure what it is. Well, you know what? But it, it as long as you can enjoy it, that's cool. Um, first things first. Let's get something to drink, guys. And today. My favorite tumbler, that Winston Churchill thing. I just love that class. Uh, and I brought a very classy uh, Scotch single malt. That's the McAllen Select Oak. What's so special about this one? Did you hear that sound? Jesus Christ. <laughs> They are aging this McAllen, that's why they called it Select Oak, in five different cask types. Uh, well, maybe cask types is wrong, um, because actually they're just using, I think, two main, um, two main categories of 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 casks. And that is uh, Spanish oak and American oak barrels. Uh, in the Spanish oak, they uh, before they were putting the whiskey in, they were like just sherry, and the American oak was bourbon and sherry. And then they have like different types of of, of barrels of casks, um, and that gives the whiskey not only a wonderful color, but also something very rich fruitiness sweetness <sighs> great great the right whiskey and the right cigar In the Friday's mail, there was my final text statement. <laughs> if you're watching the night owl, guys, I think not in the last one or so, but I think like three night owls before that, I was talking about my text declaration. Uh, and there were like two years that I had trouble with, they're finished. Wow. Guys, I'm telling you, you you can't imagine. That was like a boulder on my shoulder. A boulder on my shoulder, like a rock on my shoulder. <laughs> a boulder on my shoulder is good. Uh, and it was just sitting there, you know. And now, uh, I mean, it's not it's not through through the whole process, but I mean, it's like almost done you know no more work from my side and that's feeling like oh, fucking great 
and I didn't even care that my tax consultant was sending me another two bills for every year uh, for the extra work and the extra effort they have to put in to make all that shit happen. I was like, I was looking at the bills and I said, man, I'm so happy to pay you. I'm so happy to pay you. Here, take my money. <laughs> Do my shit. Man, guys, that was, that was great. I'm so happy, really. So, that's the that's the celebration part. Oh, that was good. And I had a good week because um, I spent some quality time actually with my wife, with my kids. We had a couple of great days together. Um, and after a long process of back and forth my wife had a, a um, don't want to go in too much detail but she had a very important surgery on Monday and I mean nothing like really critical so it was scheduled and everything you know but uh, there was also like uh, um, you know sitting on our shoulders I think that's a pretty good picture and so they did that on Monday and it was successful and she's she's feeling great and it was just it was just a good week really And we had a pro we had a couple of of good things going on this week, smoker spot wise. We had the last night out with the Balmoral. Twenty nine and Echo. Which was a good episode. Then we had the pairing. Finally was the cater say limited edition 2019 and with an excellent Glamorangie whiskey and then we had the like Friday we had the review with okay that's the next story here with the Hank Maori um, Haka Gaudi cigar a boutique brand uh, and that that stick was so surprisingly good um it was surprising <laughs> it just was a surprise uh and it was a good surprise you know sometimes you have like bad like a surprise that's not so good um like bills that you're not expecting and they're coming into uh, your mailbox for example that was a pretty good surprise um you know usually i'm i'm trying to be open for new cigars and everything around it because I um because I love cigars you know I love to love to smoke cigars so if there's something new coming out even if I don't know it I'm trying to smoke it um but very often it's like you're falling back to all the cigars that you like or uh, you're just used to these cigars in the last couple of years you know I mean, we all have our favorites. Uh, for example, I was talking very often about the Monte Cristo Double Ed Mondo, for example, um, or the uh, a couple other cigars, you know. Um, and even if then you, when you're getting disappointed because, for example, with the Monte Cristo Double Ed Mondo, you're getting a bad one, it, you you still stick to the brand, you know, to that cigar because that's the way it is so what I want to say is it's not so often that I'm smoking like uh, cigars that I never smoked before and then they are so good that I instantly thinking about putting them into my daily smoke uh, routine you know but that Hank cigar was one of it really 
Um, and then something, some something happened. I was releasing the the review, and you know what I always know uh, is if I'm if I'm releasing like a cigar review um, that covers like a not so popular cigar, you know, the the views, likes and stuff is not so high, but that is absolutely fine because. I want to smoke it, I want to review this cigar, and really I don't care if you, if like 100 people are watching it, or like 500. Because I'm just enjoying what I'm doing, you know. Um, so I was doing that review, despite the knowledge that it's probably not, it will probably not be such a popular episode, you know. <clears throat> So I released it and then um, the like the Hank CEO uh, commented um, on the um, on the review and clarified a few things. I think I I said there are five um, other Vitolas and then he clarified it that there are I think six or I can't remember exactly uh, and so on and so on. It was that was cool and then. He was answering um, another comment, <clears throat> and I think he got triggered a little bit <laughs> because you, you guys, you know how I am, right? When I'm talking about cigars, I'm not, I'm not watching my mouth, you know. And I'm sometimes I'm just coming out, you know. We had this episode about political correct correctness and what I think about it. <laughs> so I said something like. Uh, the, uh, all the rich kids that are having their own cigars and so on and so on and I think he got triggered a little bit by that because he explained uh, I'm not one of these rich kids you know I'm a self-made man so I started I think he said he started like as a postman or so and dude man that's absolutely that's, that's great you know and as I said a few minutes ago I'm not watching my mouth all the time you know so what I'm saying this rich kid, that's not like, it's not a bad thing, you know, that's just the way I'm talking, you know. So, that was funny, uh, because, you know, when you say something and you're getting an answer, and not necessarily only limits to YouTube, uh, general in life, you know, when you're in the discussion with somebody and you say something and then you have a feeling that he's like justifying himself about the things you just said or, or claimed or whatever you know and then you figure okay that was a trigger that was a trigger uh, and he's like jumping uh, jumping at it you know um, and that again that uh, not necessarily needs to be a bad thing it just you know we all we all have our triggers you know and that's cool because we're not like robots um, but then there was another thing and I want to talk a little bit about that because he said um, I don't care what other people think about my cigars I was doing the cigar for myself um, and in my opinion I don't think that that can be the truth why because I mean, when you are doing cigars just for yourself, okay, I'm going to any master planner or whatever if I have enough money and I want to have my own line. So I'm going to Tabacalera ABC and uh, hiring like blender XYC, you know. And then I'm paying the money and they're doing the cigars that I want to have. So and that are my private label cigars. I, I just smoke it, maybe my, my buddies, me, and that's it, you know. And then I think, absolutely fine. If you don't care what other people saying about your cigars, they cannot say anything because they don't know your cigars because it's your private label, right? But if you're saying you don't care what other people saying about your cigars or thinking about your cigars, and at the same time you're selling your cigars, I don't think that can, then this can be true because if you would think that way, 
I don't I don't know if that would be like a good business behavior right because you're selling something and of course if you're like a good salesman and a good businessman you want this you want people that are buying your stuff uh, to enjoy it and it doesn't matter if it's cigars or chocolate or whatever you know uh, so you should take care of what other people thinking about your stuff otherwise you would not sell it right so that was the one thing and then I was talking a little bit about the story behind the cigar and I said it like guys you know it's a story so in a funny way I think you know and then he also explained like I'm just telling you story because people ask me about the story of the cigars and that's why I think it's a good idea to publish it and hey man you're absolutely right if you have a good story and people are asking for the story behind what you're doing it just makes sense that you're giving it away you know like okay here's the story so all good it's all good man um, and I never thought or said that having a story behind the cigars is a bad thing actually it's quite the opposite as I said in the review I said man it's good that you have a story because this way it supports your like your your point that you're having good stuff you know you're just like there's an underlying story you know that supports your case so great man and it was it's a good story um, and then on the same review we had like a different comment from someone else it was Mike uh, Mecklenburg CCMC 33120 something like this I just know it's Mike uh, actually I wondered <coughs> and maybe Mike you can answer it if you're watching it what's about that name I think for example Mecklenburg that's funny because that's a state in Germany Mecklenburg Vorpommern that's the name of a state uh, like Texas in the United States we have Mecklenburg Vorpommern in Germany so that's and I was uh, when I when I hear Mecklenburg um, I always thinking about that state here in Germany <laughs> probably has a completely different background but if it's not a secret and you have some time let me know what's going on with that name it would be cool to know anyhow talking a lot today um, and he said and he's also right that if you have a good cigar like if the construction is good taste is good you need no bullshit story because the cigar is good enough right I agree 100% but I wouldn't say it that way if there was were no like but I agree 100% but but there are so many cigars are coming out nowadays it's like on a weekly basis you know you have new releases of from like of brands you know completely new cigars all different kind of stuff I mean it's it's like huge you know so if you are coming around with a new cigar that you just created and that cigar is like kick ass you know I mean it's a top-notch cigar you are saying it all people that are smoke the cigar are saying dude that's a fantastic cigar you know and let's assume it's really a good cigar you know because sometimes you're making your own stuff you smoke and think well that's great but everyone else thinks that's bullshit but let's just assume you were doing a really good cigar and it's really a good cigar and you like releasing it you know and at the same time 
there are new cigars, other cigars are coming out from like established brands, you know, like there's the new Alec Bradley, the new Monte Cristo, uh, the new J.C. Newman, the new, whatever, name it, you know. Nobody will will fear that there's a completely new cigar because it, it's 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 not a thing, you know. Because nobody knows the cigar, nobody knows the name, nobody even knows if it's a good cigar, or bad cigar. It's just you like under the under the radar, you know, under the radar, you know. It's you're not you're not you're not seeing that new stuff, you know. Also, it's a good cigar. So what do you need? You need like kick-ass marketing, you know. You need to put your money into marketing that everybody knows that you're having a good cigar. And then, like, they're getting flooded with, like, reviews and ads and whatever, you know. And you're sitting on the bar or in your lounge and saying, Hey, dude, man, where you? did you hear about that new cigar, ABC, that everybody seems to be talking about? And he said, no, what is it about? Man, there's this new brand, and he was bringing out the cigar. And guess what, man? They like, they like, they're using tobacco that is grown in a volcano, you know, with 100, 1,000 degrees, <laughs> for example, you know. And then there's the story, you know. So you're using the marketing that people are, you make them aware that there is a new cigar, your cigar, and then the, there, here's the story, you know. So then they, your customer, your potential customers know, okay, there's a new cigar. I have the name. You know, and now here's the story. And you know what happens is because people, and like everyone, you know, they not remember your ring gauge, the size, or whatever, but what they will remember is the story. If you have a good story, it just helps selling your product, you know. And I don't say that this is a good thing that you need that. But the reality is with the amount of cigars that are like released, as I said, on a weekly basis, you just need marketing. If you if you want to sell your cigar, you know. Again, if it's just a private label, no one cares, you know. But if you want to sell your stuff, you need to make people aware that you have stuff. And then you need to like convince them that it's the fucking best cigar they ever smoked, you know, with the story. Guys, at least that's what I think. Um, I'm not a marketing expert. Um, but I know a little bit about cigars. And I know a little bit about business. And that's my idea. Why a story might be important nowadays. I was talking a little bit too much. Just my friends. McAllen Select Oak.
Another good thing that happened this week was that the giveaways were finally delivered. You know, remember from the 300 subscribers giveaway? Um, I had like two feedbacks that they were there. Great. I know postal service sucks, but sooner or later it will work. And then I figured <laughs> we're reaching almost to 400 subscribers already. There was there was a quick one, right? I mean, like it took. I had a feeling like it took forever to getting to 300, and now it's like in no time. We are by the time we're recording, we're like uh, 394. So I was crazy. But it's cool. I had a nice discussion with my buddy Daniel Ravenelli from the 505 Cigar Review Show talking about joking around about books, you know. Because I think in the last night I was talking a little bit why I enjoy reading so much and he was like, books? What the fuck are you talking about, man? I will go fishing. I said, cool. Uh, but still, I love books. And I don't know, it was like months ago. Um, somebody suggested, let's go talk about your favorite books. And I said, okay, I will, I will come up with something. Uh, although it's not so easy talking about favorite books because if you re if you read like so many books and you probably have more than one favorite, and it also depends on your mood and different kind of stuff, you know. So I thought I make like a few different categories, you know, and then in the in each category, I will talk about one of my favorite books and why I think it's a good book and so on. And then I thought I first thought making a like a an episode on its own, you know, about books and cigars. The smoking cigar talking about your favorite books <clears throat> but I also thought man I'm not sure if that is like such a good idea because maybe not so many people are uh, into reading as much as I am and so on so I have to like going back and forth a couple of times and trying something thinking about it I finally came to the idea that's probably the best way to talking about it is here and there in the night all talking about one book uh, until we have like all the categories and I mean not talking about the book like 10 minutes just really briefly saying here yeah, that's the book ABC and I like it because get the point right so and then I was thinking it's a good idea starting with a cigar related book and that's why I brought this one over here. I mean, you see that is like, Jesus Christ, it's a big one, right? And that here is the German version. And in German it says, <laughs> Eine illustrierte Enzyklopädie der postrevolutionären Havana Zigarren. That's the German title. And The English title, because the that's a, just a translation, the original is, uh, is, an, is an English book, and it says an illustrated encyclopedia of post-revolution Havana cigars by Min Ron Ne. Around 500 pages. And I'm telling you one thing, guys. A. It's just about Cuban cigars. 
only cubes. And this Min Ronne guy, he's living in Hong Kong. And he's one of the persons who has like probably one of the biggest collections of Cuban cigars in the world. What did he do? Is like because he's a real aficionado, right? So he was like putting together that book. It was it was coming out I think 2003, 2004 around that. So up to that point, he's covering every single Cuban cigar. No matter if it's a long filler. A medium filler, a short filler, handmade, machine made, he's covering everything, everything. And not only that, he's like, ah, photos, tables with sizes, explanation about the cigars, the history of the brand, uh, he's talking about everything, you know. For example, also like old Davidos that are coming from were coming from Cuba, or old Dunhill cigars. Uh, and I'm telling you guys, I mean, I'm probably not the biggest cigar expert on planet Earth, you know, far away from that. But I smoked a couple of cigars. Probably more than a lot of other people. <laughs> and, but in this book there are cigars I never heard of. Never. Not even the brand name, you know. Not to talk about this, the single Vitolas and uh, um, different series and so on. So he's not only covering cigars, the, the post-revolution Cuban cigars, but he also put in tasting notes. Why? Because he smoked every single cigar he owns. You know? So he has like if he has like twenty boxes of Monte Cristo double at Mundos, he was smoking not I mean not the twenty boxes, but he smoked that cigar. And he's talking about a cigar and he's saying, Well that's a good combination with this and that, talking about how it tasted and so on. That's probably the most in detail book about post-revolution Cuban cigars you can find on the market period that's just a great book if you're really into that cigar thing and you want to know more about Cuban cigars that is the book forget all other books that are on the market that is the book and it's like huge it's like B4 or even bigger you know uh, and over 500 pages and it's it's like packed you know packed with information uh, pictures and tasting notes and everything around it so if you ever get a chance to get this book guys and you're into cigars and books and so on that's the book for you so here's my first book that I also want to talk about I was making a trip downtown just stopping by the, uh, the Davidoff lounge and like buying some cigars not new cigars just like refilling stuff and it was sad it was sad I mean not like me visiting the cigar shop that was great uh, but the way through down walking through downtown it's like everything is closed you know still and that's that's sad uh, but I really don't want to talk about uh, corona and stuff because I'm fed up with it you know really uh, 
and I have the feeling, at least here in Germany, that people are losing their their patience with all the regulations and new laws and stuff because nobody really knows what the fuck is going on here. Because every state has its own laws, you know, and uh, nobody really knows what's going on. That's a real pity. And I bought a new gadget. <laughs> a new a new toy. Oh, well, first let me drink something. Oh, because I was talking so much, guys. cigar knife don't know if you ever saw these guys they're made in France and my French sucks it's called okay, let, me, let me spell it first for you L-E-S F-I-N-E-S L-A-M-E-S and I think it's pronounced Le Fie Lams, Le Fiends, Le Fien, Le Fien, Lam. Like this. But I looked it up what it means. <laughs> the thin plates. And that's right, because it's really thin, you know. And it's a knife and a cigar cutter. And I was tiptoeing around that they were coming out like three or four years ago. With their first release and so on. And then I wasn't so sure, you know. Um, but then they brought, I think that's it, the, the Discovery series now. And they made like new wood. Forgot which one this one is that I bought. <laughs> but the, the thing is that, uh, let me show you. So that's the one side, right? And here is the other side. And now that's tricky because it's lasered in. Here you can see it a little bit. That's the map. That's the map of Cuba. In there. You cannot see it really good. But if you're looking closely at it. That's looking kick ass guys. Really. So and the, the funny thing is. Here if you're looking at the, at the handle right. There's this little. Hole in there. And if you're using it like this. You know. And you're putting your cigar in here you cut it this way and it's working great really it's working great um, so it was a nice thing to buy I just I just love knives really but it's more like I said, I love knives, you know. Um, the knife I always have with me is like, that's my that's my standard knife, you know. I always have it in my pocket. Uh, you need to open up boxes, letters, and what else, you know. Um, and in Germany, I think we have a pretty strong tradition uh, carrying knives. For whatever reason. And if you compare it to other countries. We have a pretty easy going legislation. Uh, when, it come in, when it comes to knives. You know. I mean most of Germans say. Man that's again. Too much rules and stuff. But again if you compare it to other countries. That's like nothing you know. <clears throat> but it's get it gets a little bit confusing um, on uh, what you are allowed to carry with you and not just to give you a real um, glance you know just like a couple of words about it for example 
in general you're allowed to carry knives with you period but then they we have something like restricted plates that you are not allowed to carry on to carry it with you in public unless you have a specific reason for it and whatever you know and that are mainly like three types of knives that you're not allowed to carry with you in general and that is like um, um, knives that have a that have a, a fixed plate where the plate is like longer then I think it's 12 centimeters and I think that's something like 4.75 inches prohibit the second one is a knife like this that you where you are able to open it one-handed and has a lock you know prohibited I don't care <laughs> and the third one is like swords stilettos uh, switch plates okay they're also forbidden to carry it in public you can own it you can buy it whatever you know you're just not allowed to carry it with you so real quick there was a theory so here we go with this one that would be perfectly fine to carry why because it's not a fixed plate and it has no mechanism to open it with one hand I mean if you're knowing knives and you can open it with one hand like you're doing it this way you know and then you open it but that's really one that you that is meant to open it like two-handed you know and it has no lock and that's why it's, it's really more tool than a knife because it's a cigar cutter a cigar knife but I mean what do you want to do with it uh, if it has no lock you know like if you really would use it in for whatever reason you probably like cutting your fingers uh, off than doing something useful with it but I thought I make us I make an episode talking about this tool you know because it's really cool it's looking nice and maybe some other people are interested uh, in it but now I really want to know how to how to pronounce that thing Lefine Lam I think it's Lefine Lam Lefine Lam okay Google's my friend right so let's see translator from French to English Le Okay, let's let's listen to it. Les fines lames. Les fines lames. Les fines lames. So it was more or less right, right? The thin plates. Okay. Now I'm happy. <laughs> the cigar we're now in the second half it offers like don't know how to put it it's like an it's like an easy going complexity you know there are a lot of things going on they're using five different tobaccos in here all from the Dominican Republic and um, minimum aging is eight years uh, and just a handful of P 
people at the Davidov Tabacalera are allowed to like roll that cigar. It's complex, but not overly complex. It has a it has a very nice mixture of these different flavors, aromas, you know. We have the freshness, we have the grass, we have that roasted something, where I'm still not sure what it is. Initially I said it's coffee, like smelling at it I think, but not typical coffee. And the sweetness. And now in the second half, it got a little bit stronger which is adding up to the complexity, you know. Um, I think it would be probably hard to find any of these cigars nowadays. Uh, but if you are into Davidoff cigars and you never had this, the old uh, Royal Robusto or the, the old Royal series in general, give it a try. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Me personally, I have to admit <coughs> that I like the new series, the uh, Royal release, a little bit more. A little bit more because I have the feeling that the new ones are a little bit stronger. A little bit stronger, more to full button, not full button, no, but <coughs> heavy smoke, rich smoke. It's not a cigar for a beginner uh, because it's too complex. Um, but other than that, guys, nice. And together with a fine whiskey, hard to beat. So what will happen the coming week? I have the same problem like last week. <laughs> that I'm not very well... I not worked a whole lot in advance. So it's kind of spontaneous. I probably, you know, still remember. Monday's the night owl. Wednesday we have a cigar talk or pairing or something like this. And Friday's always wee wee time. So... Now you still get the chance. If you want me to cover something specific, maybe I'll pick it up and we're doing that, you know. If not, I will be kind of spontaneous and probably the same day where I'm uploading the video or releasing it, I'll probably be doing the recording, you know. I have a couple of things in mind, um, but um, I don't want to talk about it. Maybe you have a good idea uh, that you want me to talk about or want me to smoke. I still, I have a pretty cool idea for a new cigar talk, but I'm not sure if I can, because it needs a little bit of preparation. Um, so this probably will not happen uh, this week. But there's always uh, enough stuff, really. I mean, I have like, uh, maybe not a list, but you know, I always like sorting my cigars in a specific way. Maybe you watched the humidor tour there, I was talking about it a little bit. <clears throat> so I always have like, I can see what I want to do, you know. That gives me that little bit extra structure I need in order to do my shit. Oh, great. Okay, guys. Lovely cigar. Guess I'll finish that, drink a little bit more whiskey, and enjoy the rest of the night. Um, 
and let's see what happens. Guys, lovely you were here. Very cool that we can do something virtually together. And uh, I, I see that a lot of the same people are always watching the night owl and commenting on it. And our guys, I cannot express how grateful I am for the comments you're giving me, all the love you're giving me, and the stuff I'm doing here, especially on that night owl thing. Because if you remember, like the first episode where I said, okay, like it's an experiment, you know, it's a test. I don't know if that is going to work or not, and if people like it. Maybe it's totally boring me sitting here for an hour or longer sometimes. And I mean, talking about just things that are going through my mind, you know. Uh, but it's really good for me, I think. Because it's a lot of fun. And I'm really enjoying doing that. And it's kind of relaxing. Um, and But to see that also there are people out there who also just like that that format, you know, that that very long thing we're doing here. That's that's just cool. So thanks a lot guys, really. That's cool. So I would say thanks for watching. As always. Enjoy a good cigar if you can. Uh, enjoy life. And most importantly Stay safe and stay healthy. I wish you a good night. Cheers. Mm -hmm.